Right, so today's challenge is to make a copy of this seat box. So measure it up, draw it out, and then uh, copy it out onto a bit of steel and see if we can bend it and make it the shape we want it to be. Right, okay, so let's get the cardboard out and start measuring. So annoyingly, this is three and a bit rather than three inches directly. Which doesn't make any sense to me, but there we go. <coughs> so, if we find the centre of our bit of card, which is as close as close enough, uh, four and that. right, four and an eighth, four and an eighth, but there. Center that way. Okay, it's over eleven. Right, now we can use that as a center point. Right. Get the measurement of this closest to the millimetre, because it's easier to work with. And it is 80 millimetres, yeah. as it happens. That's a lot easier to work with. Okay, so 80 millimetres is 48 aside, which is a lot easier to figure out. It is... Oh, that's too late now. Oh, All right, right, bend. <laughs> so I cut it. Right, so we're now looking at from the point which that comes up there. So there's five hundred and twenty square as need the same. What's left of it? Yes, happy days. Forty-five. It might simply be a case of just holding it on. Let me do it that way around so you can see what I'm doing. Holding it in place and drawing around it, I think. Nothing like trying to draw on crusty metal. <laughs> Right, the next thing we need to do is get a knife and score the bend lines. Okay, so we score where you want this to bend. It will bend easier. Like so. That's something like a tea box needs to look like. Let's try it in the car. Something like that. Right, OK, 
Okay, now we've got our cardboard template. We're gonna, and we've got a piece of steel cut out the size, kind of. Just gonna mark around the edges of this so we know where to bend it. Now, the problem with the Sharpie, you've got a big fat line, but the trick is, is to go to the inside of the edge of that line. So that's where our cut line will be across that inside edge there. That makes sense. Mark out where the bend lines are going to be. And where it needs to be cut off afterwards. Yeah, but I try to remember when I'm doing this is dotted lines for bends less likely to cut them in oh yeah <laughs> How many people on YouTube are watching that saying you're doing it wrong, Dave? Oh, oh no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, if there's a better way of doing it, let me know. I was talking about the way you were marking it. They were sat there watching it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right, let's trim this out. The size you want it to be. Using metal fire. I got Take that with a template. That looks something like you want it to look like. Get the benders out next. Right, let's see if we can bend this in the wrong direction. I think we probably can. Pull that back a bit. Happy? Wind it down. It's starting to look like a thing. It's starting to look like a thing. <clears throat> that is like the thing. <laughs> so is it loosely in place to begin with? And all I'm doing is just tapping these flanges around now on the on the vise. I'll show you what I mean by that. Pretty straightforward. So at the vise, a nice bit of flat metal, which I've put a sanding disc across just to make sure the edges are still sharp. Got no donks in them. And with it on there like that, just knock that down with the garnishing hammer. Straightforward enough, nothing, nothing too exciting about how to do that. Same again along there, just hold it, hold your flat back in. Say for argument's sake, this is the one you want to do. Hold your flat piece of metal across there, hit along that edge first to get the crease in, and then just bring that piece down. 
it's pretty straightforward. So uh, the next challenge I got is to put a radius on that, so a sharp bend on the original one. The radius is round, so that's what I'm going to have a go at doing next. This is what I mean by that. So you've got the, that's the radius around there, and this one just comes down and sharp. So what I'm thinking is something like that to mark it off and plan a sharp piece around. So there's my mark. So it's just a case of fold that now against there somewhere. Okay, so that's not too far off there now. We've got a nice curve coming in on this. Next thing is to put a little lift on that because that's how the original one was. I'm not quite sure why, but it's on there, so it'll be nice to replicate it if we can. So I'll mark that up and see what we can do about that now. What we want to do now is knock this down on here. Now I'm hoping to use this like so and just knock that down into that recess and on that side and work it across. So we'll see how that gets on. I'll uh, right, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm trying to achieve here. So if we can get that to settle into there. Like so. That's not a million miles off what we want. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of the shape, just need to tidy that up now. But yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, I think that's the idea. It's uh, going into there quite nicely. Right, the next thing to get across is these fixing points here. Now I've got no in, uh, I'm very unlikely to use original escort seats, even less likely to use original RS escort seats because they're just, they're just a stupid price. But I have found MGF seats fit quite nicely. I've got those in the pop and they're quite a nice fit, but they don't tilt forwards. So what I will do is I'll copy these fixings for now and then because they'll, they'll line up with the carpet as well because I want to use original carpet in here and then what I'll do is I'll make a frame from there up to suit whatever seats I put in there uh, to suit the car so that's the next challenge is uh, make some brackets for that or some captive nuts I should say Let's get the holes drilled in. Check those for central. Yeah, okay, there you go. Now what we're going to do now is simply weld a couple of M8 nuts on the back. Now what you'll find when you do this is if you just put an M8 nut on the back and held flat with a with a, uh, a set screw like that you won't necessarily get the get it right in the center and so that can sometimes cause you problems with binding up against the side of it that's not the end of the work you just run a tap through to clean it off but if you've got and i should have some here somewhere See what we got in my box of tricks yeah something like that so 
this is perfect. So we can use is tapered edge set screw like that and when you put that through there to hold your nut in place it will automatically center, center the nut in place like so. So when you then weld it in place you don't usually have to worry about um, putting a tap through it to clean it back up again. We'll demonstrate what I mean. Okay. So the idea being that should now be central to the hole we drilled. So once we take that out of there, it's a bit hot at the moment, once we take that out of there, we run a set screw, set screw through it, you'll see it should run through without any hassle. So it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work because you just want to tap down it, but this can save a little bit of time if it does work. Right, hopefully you can see that that is nice and central into that hole. Just get an M8 set screw now and run that in. See that runs in nicely without any binding. So what I used to find, if I just used a flat M8 set screw behind to, tight, to hold it in place while I welded it, it would often be up against the side and then I'd be messing around with taps to get it to run right. But this, this method holds it nice and central to the hole. Okay, so the next thing to add is some holes. Now, I'm not quite sure what the purpose of those holes were for, if I'm honest. But I do want to put some holes in it. But what I'm inclined to do is put sort of one there, one there, one there, and maybe one there, and put a flange on them so they add a bit of rigid rigidity to it as well. Because these are just holes. They don't actually add or well, take away anything, or well, take a bit of lightness out of it. But just holes don't really give any strength. But holes with um, flanges around them give a surprising amount of strength. So I think that's going to be the next challenge, is mark that up and work out where they're going to look the best without looking awful, if that makes sense. Right, so what I'm thinking, it's a hole either end, and possibly maybe a hole in the middle, it'll look neatest. So three holes in total, or there, there and there. I try to put four holes in, one of them is going to end up in the way of one of these holes here, so let's measure out three holes. That's the original one here. Kind of, interestingly enough, the original one had a hole there about central. So, and drill those, hole, those holes out to 12mm, then I use my hydraulic press then to punch the holes out and, and put the um, flanges, I want to call them, but there's another word for it, I can't remember what it is. Wee beast set up. Right, so this is cheap and cheerful Trinesium eBay thing. It's brilliant. It's designed just for punching holes, but I use it, I, I cheat a little bit and I use it to make to um, punch the holes out, then, then flange the holes afterwards. Let me use this, I can never remember how it works. So, bear with. I remember now. Okay, so, like so. That over that, that over that. Put that down. And pump away. 
used it. There we go. Lovely. Like I said, this is only a cheap kit. And, uh, brilliant, to be fair. out over the hole. Screw that down. Come on, boy. Go. Dimple die. That's the word I was looking for earlier. So Dimple hold. Simples. Yeah, how's that? Happy days. Super. Looks half about that does. So yeah, so the next stage now is to drill out my plug welds and plug weld it into position right I do have one of these so I might as well use it to pop up in the spots to do now when I come to make the other side because it'll be a, few, a couple of months down the line before I get to the other side watch this video myself so I can remember how I did it and it is one completed seat box I'm not gonna bother filming welding it into place because that's not anything gonna be anything too exciting about that so it's just plug welds as normal so I hope that gives you an idea of how to Put something like that together and even if you don't have a hydraulic tool for cutting that out it's, you can do it with a whole saw cut the whole, whole saw out and then next size up um socket and a bit of threaded rod and squeeze it through it is always a way that's how i used to do them before i had the that tool there so thanks for watching well, watch out for the next one we're getting perilously close to a thousand subscribers as well which is lovely I didn't expect that. I certainly didn't ex expect it so soon. It's fantastic news, which means I, I may actually start earning actual pennies from YouTube, which would be amazing. Even if I just earn a few quid, it'll help pay towards the consumables. So all happy days. And thank you, everybody who's subscribed so, so far. It's been, uh, been brilliant. And thank you again for fantastic comments I'm getting.